New tonight, 37 years in business and an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. But one of Sacramento's biggest plumbing contractors may be in danger of losing its license. And these people are elderly and not always in the, in the best you know, care of their own faculties. And we're concerned that they were being taken advantage of. Tonight, KCRA 3 investigates has learned the state accuses Bonnie Plumbing of deliberately misleading and overcharging customers. KCRA 3 investigates Brian Heap shows us the state is now taking action. Leonard Granger's favorite way of passing the time is this making fishing rigs by hand. He's been selling them for years. They get all done, they look like these. But two years ago, Granger was instead fishing for a plumber. He needed to replace the water heaters at his two homes, so he turned to one of the biggest plumbing companies in the Sacramento area, Bonnie Plumbing. Well, I saw their ads on TV, and I listened to it on the radio, and when they said, you can trust us from the very beginning, we'll get the permits, we'll go all the way through the job, and uh, conform with the state code and county code and so forth. I thought, now that's the outfit I want to work with. The company is certainly high profile. The red and blue vans have been a staple since Mark Bonney started the company in 1978. It now has over 100 of those vans and 150 employees. When you're sewer drain There are ads on the television, and a new pro soccer stadium is called Bonney Field. Granger hired the company to install two water heaters at his farm in Vacaville and another property in Dixon. These are copies of the checks that I paid him with. Receipts show he paid more than $2,000 for one job and about $1,800 for the other. Granger says Bonnie's employees told him Dixon City Code and Solano County Code required expansion tanks like this be installed. He paid nearly $450 for both tanks. I'm not sure what that does. He also paid at least $150 for permits and administrative fees on each job. Done a wonderful job. I have no complaints on the work. No complaints until months later when he called the city and county to find out why his scheduled inspections hadn't been done. I called both offices and they looked at their files. We don't have no re reference of all of the work ever being done. No permit ever permitted or anything. Not only had the person doing the work for Granger not pulled the permits, city and county officials say Granger paid more than he probably should have for the permits as well. Solano County tells KCRA 3 Investigates a permit for replacing a water heater should cost $100, not the $150 Granger was charged for the permit and administrative fees. And for the permit at Granger's home in Dixon, the city says it normally costs anywhere from $36 to $40, yet Bonnie charged Granger $163 for the permit and administrative fees. And Bonnie never pulled the permits for either job. This was on top of the cost for replacing the water heaters. Oh yes, it went from something like thirteen hundred dollars to twenty or to two thousand dollars, with all the additional things they added on, and I wasn't aware of it. He said that's all required. So Granger filed a complaint with the contractor state license board. It turns out he wasn't the only one. In some cases, they actually charged the consumers for the permits and then never went and pulled them. Rick Lopes with the CSLB says they looked into Granger's complaint. The board found Bonnie never pulled the permits. It also found the expansion tanks that Granger was told were required for code compliance were not required by the city or county. And the state says the Bonnie employees who did the work weren't registered with the licensing board. And these people are elderly and not always in the, in the best you know, care of their own faculties, and we're concerned that they were being taken advantage of. The board found three other similar cases, all of them involving customers over the age of 80. What's um, you know, concerning to us about this is it looks like that the work went beyond just the repair work. In one case, the state says a 94-year-old customer paid about $3,000 more for a water heater repair than what the state's expert thought she should have. In another, an 80-year-old woman had her sinks and toilets clogged. After agreeing to replace her sewer line for just over $6,000, the complaint alleges that when the work was nearly complete, her son stepped in and stopped the job because a Bonnie employee asked for another $2,500. None of the Bonnie employees in these cases were registered with the CSLB. And in all four cases, the employees failed to pull the permits. We've got evidence that leads us to believe that the laws have been broken and it deserves us taking a look at trying to take away the license.
The contractor's board filed this accusation, the most serious action it takes, referring the case to the attorney general who will plead the case before an administrative law judge. Our big concern here is to make sure that the people who were harmed receive restitution and that we make sure that the systems are in place to make sure these kinds of things don't happen. This doesn't become a business practice. We reached out to Bonnie Plumbing for its response to the state's accusation. No one would go on camera, but in a phone call, Bonnie CEO Jim Crabbe told me he thinks the company has been wrongly accused, and he added that it would be inappropriate to comment on a pending investigation. The company did send a statement saying that in the wake of the CSLB accusation, they dedicated a new department of three additional people to monitor and safeguard the permitting process. Yet it's in the hands of the judge to determine if Bonnie keeps their license and pays back all the customers in the complaint. Leonard Granger did get this letter from Mark Bonnie stating they're sorry they missed the mark as it relates to not getting your permits pulled twice. Bonnie also gave Granger a $200 check to compensate him for his inconvenience. Still, Granger's happy the state took his complaint seriously. Took my case and took it all the way along with the other people all the way to the top, and I really appreciate what they are doing for the little man in this state. The contractor state license board and the attorney general are still waiting for a hearing date on the accusation. Mark Bonney has sold the company since the investigation began, but the board is still asking to revoke his license as well as the licenses of the employees involved in this case. They also want Bonney to pay restitution to the customers in the accusation. Brian Heap, KCRA 3 News.